Jennifer, thanks so much for talking to me today. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I personally know your story because you, I was around one day years ago when you were telling about you know, your passion for having this pony club and I never forgot it. So I would like you, you know, in the spirit of talking about living your passion, I want you to just talk to me. Tell me, tell me that whole story again. Well, it started a long time ago. Um, the part I think that you heard was the fact that I had uh, found an interest in horses and it seemed to be above and beyond everything else that, that I enjoyed. And uh, I, I didn't really realize that in my mind I was building a, a story and a, and a dream and an idea. But if, if I look around here, as, as we sit here today, this, this is it. And, and in thinking about this, it was, I was 17. And my father said, no, you can't, um, you can't make a living with your, with your passion. And I think, I'm not sure if that was the word he used, you know, those, back in those, year, those years. But he said, you can't make a living at that. You need to go to university. And I said, sure. You know, I mean, I had been a pretty good student and didn't mind it. So I went and got a business degree and uh, did the restaurant business, did a bit of car business, and uh, got to the point where my kids were young, as I look up at the house here, my kids were young and they were being raised by somebody else, right? Because I was working nine to five and uh, we had a really good babysitter but uh, I thought you know what maybe I can do this so it started with that and it started with one or two horses and one or two students and uh, then it became a reality that this this barn that we would built and the arena and the whole sort of property was the, the was the dream so I'm not sure I'm not sure when it actually ki came together that that was the the dream and and one day I started turning and went huh the here it is you realized one day, oh my gosh, I, I manifested yeah. what I had been dreaming about all my life. Yeah, but it, as I say, it wasn't a conscious thing. It was, it was the dream that I know I had in, in looking back. Yeah. And then one day I stood and went, huh, here it is. Paint me a picture of the contrast between when you were like in the car business or in the restaurant business and how you felt versus being immersed in your passion. Just talk about that. Well, and that, that's a really good one. That your question brings to mind, I always enjoy the people, right? It was the people and I thought, oh, I, I miss, you know, the people coming in and I was on the happy side of the car business <laughs> and not the service side. Yeah. And uh, I missed, I thought, I'll, I'll be lonely, right? I'll be out here, I'll be in Hampton. And, and But you know what? I've surrounded myself with great students, great parents, like a whole great team of people that come here with, mm -hmm. you know, the positive energy and, and the excitement and the enthusiasm to be part of what I've built. Yeah. So that, that's so much more exciting. I mean, not that I, you know, I didn't mind what I was doing, but this, this has a whole, I'd be a really bad employee, right, after being your own boss now. <laughs> <laughs> that's been the consistent theme throughout yeah. all these interviews with you yeah. amazing entrepreneurial, you know, passion following people is that we're not employable. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I would be a bad employee because, I mean, I can set the schedule. I can set the, you know, the people that want to come and, and, yeah, I'd yeah. be a bad employee. Yeah. <laughs> so, why horses? What is it about horses? You said when you were about 17, you realized that you, you seemed to enjoy it much more than anything else. What is it about horses? I think it was, um, and my mother says it really well. She says she was always at the barn, not the bar. Right, and I would get up at 5:30 in the morning when my friends were coming home at 5:30 in the morning. Yeah. Because I had a horse show, or I had the responsibility of taking care of the animals, and you know I have some some uh, people that do barn chores for me on the weekends, and sometimes they'll call and say, you know, I'm I'm tired, I have to sleep in, and that's fine. They're teenagers, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking, do they not realize the animals still need fed? Right. So that sense of responsibility, you know, that my kids have. It's been instilled, the responsibility with the horse, the respect for it, yeah. the fact that a, a thousand pound animal lets us do this, uh, ride them, um, you know, they're kind and generous and, and I think that the, what the horse teaches the kids and the people mm. is, is so valuable. That's the and, you know, what still after all these years, what excites you? Like what, what do you get up in the morning and go, oh geez, I can't wait for? So I just got a new horse. And oh. it's just like a new toy, and uh, it's it's like Christmas all over again. So every horse is different. They have different personalities. They have different skills, abilities, uh, and everyone's going to teach you something. And I think that's what's fun because the kids will come in and they'll ride, you know, one horse one week. And next week they get a different horse, and it teaches them something different. Jennifer, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been great.